welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and something I hope will be really special today. Um, the puzzle we're going to be trying is called Anti-Divisor Philomeno and it's by Sudoku Explorer who's definitely appeared on the channel before. I remember some of Sudoku Explorer's puzzles. They're always wonderful, often, often due to some discovery that Sudoku Explorer has made about geometry and Sudoku. But the reason we're doing this is because this puzzle has been recommended by none other than Fistmafell. And when Fistmafell recommends us a puzzle, we listen. So, yeah, we had an email from the great man saying that we really, really should try this on the channel. Apparently it's beautiful with some quite innovative new logic. So that's exactly what I'm going to get to do today. And I will read you the rules of this one in a moment or two. Um, what do I have to tell you about today? Oh, I've got some rather lovely birthdays to do. Let's start with those. So... Chris, you've turned 24 today, and I know this because your friend Joaquin wrote to us and said that you might appreciate a shout out. So happy birthday to you. Kristen, you've turned 28 today, and I know this because your sister Amy uh, wrote to us. Uh, and Amy, I think it's your birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday for tomorrow. I understand the two of you prefer cheesecake, and I won't hold that against you. Um, Next, Marion over there in Austria. Marion, you've turned 15 today. And I know this because your dad, Michael, wrote to us. Um, I think your whole family likes Cracking the Cryptic, actually, because I think we've done shout outs for, is it your, your mum, Karen, before? I, I might be wrong. I hope I'm not getting that wrong, though. Um, next, to one of the great constructors in the world, Panthera. It's Panthera's birthday today. So happy birthday, Panthera. And in fact, Panthera dropped us an email to say, Oh, well, remind us really um, that the daughter, the one year old daughter of one of our favorite people, Peter Venus, one of the world, another of the world's great constructors, uh, Emma Sophie turns one today. So, Peter, I hope that you uh, and the family are well and are able to have a brilliant birthday. I guess chocolate cake's probably a bit, it's probably a bit too rich for, for a one year old, but I'm sure, I'm sure you'll find something for Emma Sophie to, to enjoy. Um, and then finally, finally, we have an extraordinary birthday, Peter. Peter has turned 65 today, and um, I think Peter is over in St. Paul, Minnesota. And the reason I know this is because more people have written to us about Peter's birthday than any other birthday in the history of Cracking the Cryptic. So often, well, mostly, we get one person suggesting a birthday. Sometimes we've had two people. Peter's birthday, at least four people, at least four friends, different friends and relations. Uh, so Melissa, Timothy, Sebastian, and I think your cousin, I want to say Chinzia. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Peter. They all wrote to us and said you'd like a shout out. So I'm happy to accommodate, I hope. Well, I know, in fact, chocolate cake and chocolate ice cream. I'm not wrong, am I? So I hope you have a great day today. Um, other than that, speaking of Fistenfell, um, Fistenfell's recommendations, well, of course, many of you did battle with Fistenfell's Sudoku Hunt, which was our Christmas present to our patrons over on Patreon. And I've got more names of correct solvers. So, Alonso Perez Luna, Thomas Le Petit, uh, Brent Bell, Daniel Cox, Oliver Walden, Andrew Alexander Foss, uh, Andrew Edwards, Jerome Duman, uh, with a little help from Bianca, I understand. Uh, Sarah Tervia, uh, Ben and Anna, or Banana. <laughs> Georgie Matev, uh, Denis Uret, Jimothy, Nim Bachelor, Monica Rice, uh, Micah Turway. Could be, yeah, no, that sounds right. Could be Turvey, I suppose. I'm not sure which. Andrew Houchin. Paul Zielinski, Antoine Kwai Laborde, Len Sorensen, Matt McCurry, and Toshi Kato. All of you sent in the correct solutions. Very, very well done. And to those of you who are battling with Jay Dyer's uh, Sudoku Alchemy Hunt, um, numerical alchemy, I think it's called actually, you've still got four days left. So good luck. Now, these are the rules of Anti-Divisor Philomeno by Sudoku Explorer. In fact, I just snipped a, um, an example Philomeno grid. So why don't we stare at this um, while we read the rules? So in Philomeno, we have to divide the grid into regions of orthogonally connected cells. Let's just deal with that because 
I get so many emails about this. I know for many of you, you'll be very familiar with the word orthogonally. Not everybody is. Orthogonally means sharing an edge. So those two cells are orthogonally connected. These two cells are not orthogonally connected. They only connect at a point. Um, we can make these two cells orthogonally connected by adding that to the region. Now that would be a region of orthogonally connected cells because you can, re you can reach every cell in the region by using a long edge boundary. Um, now each cell should contain a digit equal to the size of its region, i.e. the number of cells in its region. So going back to our example, you can see there's an example grid here. Um, and if we look at the finish grid, you can see that um, every every cell has a size, you know, has a size in it, if you like. Um, and so this region is of size four, and because it's got four cells in it, and every cell in that region contains a four. Um, this is of one. This is of four, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now. The tricky rule and the new rule for this puzzle, so normally in Philomeno, you can't have two regions with the same size sharing an edge, so an orthogonal connection. Here, the size of any region must not divide the size of an orthogonally adjacent region. So this is why it's anti-divisor. So th this puzzle I can see is broken under that rule set because you can't deal with the ones. One will always be a divisor. If there was a if there was a region in this puzzle of size one, it couldn't be next to anything because it would divide into um, the, the size of the any adjacent region. So what we're saying here is, I'm just trying to see if I can. So for example, this six region here, this region of size six, whatever that looks like, let's say it looks like this. That could not touch this three region. So if this three region, let's make it blue. If we were trying to, if this six region went there and we were trying to decide where to put this region of size three, it couldn't go into that cell and it couldn't go into that cell. Because if it did, we'd have a region of size three connected orthogonally with a region of size six and that would break the rules because obviously three is a divisor divisor of six. It's a really, really cool twist. And I think it's going to be incredibly restrictive. But anyway, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play, make sure my hands are on the keyboard. My, I've got my right glasses on, so I've got no excuses. And let's get cracking. And we shall get cracking by... Um, hang on. Let's see. We can say that. Well, OK, I was about to say something about those threes that would, I think, have been wrong. Actually, these threes might connect to one another uh, because they could be like that, couldn't they? But if they're not part of the same region, we've got to keep them apart. So we'd have to have something like that because because obviously three is a divisor of itself. Um, and therefore they couldn't touch orthogonally. Nine and two, that's absolutely fine to be a two or a nine. Uh, two and three. Ah, there's nowhere easy to start, is there? I love this. I think this has got two stars out of five for difficulty on Logic Master Germany. And it's still a little bit opaque to me about exactly what we're meant to do. Two and four can't go together, can they? So if this four started to encroach upon the regions close to this two or the cells close to this two, it would very much restrict the two. Because, of course, two does divide into four. The six can't go, the six here can't go, ooh, actually the six is bounded quite, quite hard, I think. Where can that six go? Uh, not many places. So it can never, it can never go into a cell that's orthogonally next to a two or a three, can it? So it's got to steer clear of... OK, so so if I just highlight those cells for a moment, these are the cells that I think the six can take in these two columns without finding itself in a cell that's orthogonally adjacent 
to a region that it can't be orthogonally adjacent to. So and that's only four cells. So that cell, in fact, let's let's depurplify those. That cell must be part of the six, because if it wasn't, the six couldn't reach enough cells. And in fact, that cell must be part of the six as well, because again, if it wasn't, we'd be trying to cram the six into just those five cells, and that's five is not equal to six. So the six must go there. It could it could form a sort of arrowhead like this probably so, so okay so now we can delineate the nine can't we the nine is clearly a different region size from the six so now it looks like it looks to me like the nine is a little bit tricky now because it's got to avoid those threes nine can touch a six um the two at the top of the grid can't go there. So the two is a horizontal region now. We know that. So I'm going to use, um, do I want to use that color? I mean, this is the pen tool, by the way, which Sven has built into the software, which allows us to delineate edges or new edges. So if you don't see the option to create that on your screens, click the cog icon on the right hand side of the grid and enable pen tool. Make sure you have your pen tool enabled. That will allow you to do these 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 little accoutrements that are so helpful, especially in region division puzzles. So, okay, so we actually we can do the same between the six. So this cell, that cell there is not. Well, what number is that? What, what number goes in this cell? What size is the region? It can't be one because one divides into everything. It can't be two. It can't be three because three divides into six. It, oh, it could be four. It's going to be four, isn't it? So, oh no, four divides into two. No, what am I talking about? It can't. No, it's not four. It's at least five. Five is prime. So that's going to work. Six doesn't work, obviously. Seven is the next prime. That's fine. Eight doesn't work because two divides into eight. So, okay, so it's five, seven, or another odd number that's very large. So, ah, okay, right. So this, I can see how the two works now. That's really lovely, actually. This, this cell, I'll make it orange. Where does it go? Well, if we squeeze it to the top left, as, as far as we can, it could take those cells. But you can see it needs to be at least of size five. So it must take those and that's going to pen the two in. So we know it reaches this cell so we can make those orange and the two is now bounded. So we'll make the two a boring gray color. Now this has got to be at least five. So it's got to extend again. Um, I was about to say it can hit this, but it can't. It can't hit that actually. The two, right. So the two, the two is finished. What color is that then? Yeah, okay, I see. Right, so this little cell is interesting now because that can't be part of the six because two and six are dividers and it can't be a one for the reasons we said. There are no one regions of size one in the puzzle. So it must therefore be orange, however large orange is. So let's do some more region division. Um, this is not a size four region. That was the mistake I almost made earlier. So this is either five and stops here or it's seven or it's more. Ah, no, right. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's five. It's five because let's try and make it seven for a moment. If we make it seven, it's got to come down there. And now this four's broken because the four's going to run into the two here. <laughs> it's going to take those two and then it's got no move. It is zugzwanged. Um, the zugzwanging of the philomeno digit. Uh, so actually that's lovely. So that means this is a five. These are all fives. This, is, oh, okay. So this five can't take this cell now because that's five and five divide into each other. So, it, oh, it's really, yeah, it's really cool the way this rule works because it's basically just an extension of normal philomeno because normal philomeno is encompassed within the rule that um, 
Sudoku Explorer has built into this puzzle. So this cell has to join up with the one below it because there are no regions of size one. We'll make this, uh, what color should we use? Blue, I've not used blue yet. Um, oh, and it's four. Blue is four. Because where does this go? If, if, if blue was not four, the four's up here again and is bumping into the two. So that's got to be the four. So these are both four. The, the two and the four have to be chaperoned and kept apart. Otherwise they behave in a totally immodest manner. Um, and, and then we get stuck. Uh, hang on a moment. Let me just think. Uh, it's, it was going quite well there for a moment or two. So this six, perhaps, I've got to be a bit careful. It can come here. Yeah, it's, okay, this six is more trapped in than it used to be, I think. I don't quite understand why, but wh where does it go now? If we, If it goes right, it can go here. And it can go there without bumping into the two and the three. But that's as far as it's allowed to go. So it must take that cell, I think, at least. It could be coming down, well, it could be coming down a bit further. So now this cell has to be part of the nine. Because the nine, the nine can't come here or here. So effectively it's been walled in. Oh, in fact, it's going to be very much walled in. Yeah, if, if we highlight the cells that the nine cannot visit now without bumping into a naughty square. It cannot be orthogonally next to any of those cells. All of those cells are out of bounds because they would be connected to a region of size three. So the nine is going to have to slip, look, down those, down that side of the grid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it definitely, in fact, comes all the way down there. Um, at least so okay so we delineate it from the six we delineate those from the six so okay and I can see that now becomes nine because the nine has to get down to there so we, we've got six of the nine nine cells but the, okay Ah, ah, but the six also is not allowed to touch. Oh, okay, I know how I should have thought of this. I didn't think of this until just now. But I bet you the, the more sensible way of doing this is to say, well, two, well, three stops nines, two and three stop sixes. So in other words, I've got 15 cells on the left side of the grid that I have to pack in. Now, Okay, but but I'm going to gloss over that for a moment and look at those two cells. Now, it is possible, or I thought it was possible, for those to complete the six like that. But it's actually not possible, because if I was to do this, what would I make this digit? Now, this digit couldn't be a two or a three, because they would be orthogonally next to a six. So it would have to be a one, which, they, which we know is impossible, because one would divide into everything it was connected next to. So in fact, the six only takes one of those cells maximum, which means it must take this cell. And it, uh, and it does take what, exactly one of these cells. And that means the nine comes down look, in order to connect to its friends. So... So now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We don't know about this cell, do we? I know, well, we sort of do. No, we do. It's the same problem. If that was part of the nine, then the six would go there, and this cell has no fill at all. Um, because it couldn't be two or three or one. So the right, the nine is bounded. The nine stops there. We know it can't go into a gray cell. So the nine goes all the way down the left hand side where it's now reached a count of seven, which means it's definitely if it even if it took this one, it's definitely taking that one as well. So that gets fluorescent greenified. And. Hmm. 
Okay. And then we get stuck, do we? How can we... Well, it's... This... Okay, I'm going to keep doing the same trick because it keeps working. How does the four come down there? It can't, can it? Because then the six goes there. And again, this cell is has no possible fill. There's nothing I could put into it. So the four goes here. Um, and that, therefore, gives us a little Tetris piece at the top. It gives us um, a five here, using the power of the five having to extend. The five, oh, the five and the nine can absolutely touch each other, so we don't have to worry about any shenanigans going on between those two. Um, hmm, okay. So, so perhaps a better question. Maybe I should have asked this question a few minutes ago. What is that? I.e. what number is that? We know... Yeah, I see, I see, sorry. Right, because the six is coming into one of those two cells, the two and the three have to not go into this cell. So what number is this cell? It's not one, it's not two, it's not three. It's not four, because two divides into four. Oh, it could be five, look. It could be five. Uh, it can't be six, because one of these is going to be a six. Right, so it's another of these five set. It's, it's like the one up there. It's five or another odd number that's higher than five. Than, than five. So seven, possibly connecting to the nine here. Um, okay, therefore, therefore what? <laughs> what do we do with this newfound information? We could, all oh, right, okay, so no, I think I've got to continue this tactic, don't I? All of these grey cells have become difficult in the sense that we know, because, oh, yeah, okay. Not all of them, actually. Those two are less difficult. But I, I can certainly now draw some borders around these two threes. Because those two threes can't touch their friends, the nine, the, all of that is absolutely forced. I'm going to get rid of the grey cells now, actually. I think they're starting to confuse me. But, okay, what's that, then? And what's that? Oh, that this one is better. That one's more interesting. What it, what exactly is this number? It's not one. Now, if it was two, it would poke down here and touch a six, which would be a divide. Well, two does divide into six, so it's not a two. It's not a three. So it's at least a four, and it can't be the six down here because six is divided. Three divides into six, so that is at least a four. So this is some new region that we've got coming down here. So the six, oh, so the, right, so the three now has to extend this way. Right, so we we haven't got a color for three at the moment. We Three could be red, I've not used red. So now this three has to go that way because it can't bump into its friend down there. So we've got, well, what have we got? We've got that and that as necessary. That, the two is now finished, look. This little two, which we shall, oh, I'll make it gray because I made this gray, but now this needs a new color. We'll make that um, light green. Light green will be will mean that we don't know what's going on with it. Um, so this we know is we know this is at least of size four. Otherwise, if we're getting into the five seven well five seven eleven type situation, it couldn't be a nine because it would connect to its friends. So this six, okay, we know this six. Oh, the nine. The nine is finished. Sorry, this was obvious. I've got eight cells. Its, it's ninth cell can only go there, look. So there we go. We get a nine here. We get a greenif greenification here. This has to come out. So purple was our color for sixes. So this is now coming to here. That's finishing the three, look. So our three has suddenly become core eight. 
which means oh which which fetch oh this is beautiful right so now look my other three becomes core eight and that three let's fill in it's all of its its uh, pieces can't bump into this now so this one needs to be fenced off okay but that could still go up or or connect to its friend here so I can't see quickly what that means so let's let's do that the, oh okay well that yes <laughs> okay well, well this is a simple question again if I had a bit of either patience or talent I would have immediately the moment I, I realized that this was a six and had to extend out here I, it can't bump into a two can it two does divide into six so where does this get six cells from well those six cells are the only place that it can go without bumping into the two so that is a whole new region and I just realized I missed out a poor little digit there so it'd be lovely to know well be lovely to know how big that is wouldn't it the two now has to not travel into any of those cells so that cell's interesting surely what's this it's probably going to be this because it's not one it's not two if it was three it would bump into this and be a divisor of six it's not four because that would be two divides into it so that's this is another of these cells that's either five or a higher odd number which means that it must go up to here must do that okay and then it must go this way um, now the reason for that is it can't just join up here and stop because if it did that's a size six region which it couldn't be because it would be a next to a three and next to a six region so it's going to so given this has to come up there it has to go there but it, it still could absolutely join up to its its friends in yellow it's just got to take that cell and that's still important look because that means we can fill in the second two here we grayify the two regions So again, I'm now wondering about this cell. What is that cell? It's not three. Three divides into six. It's not two. It's not four. So it's another one. It's another one of these naughty regions that has to be at least five. And can it be six? No, it can't be six because obviously two divides into it. So this, I don't actually know what that does. It can't bump into this though. So this is a big region this is at least i want to say this is at least seven then because look given its size at the moment it's got to come out at least to here now this green is our unknown region actually i should have made that one the same shouldn't i green is the unknown region size so this this needs to now take another cell and whichever one it takes here it will be next to this so it can't be a five so we get rid of five from here. We know it can't be a six, so it's at least a seven. Two, three, four. The six has to get out of, of this. The six has been sort of pushed into the corner. <laughs> uh, so that's got to be a six. That's got to be a six. six. Oh, the six can't bump into the three. Oh, this is co this quality, isn't it? It is so cleverly put together. So now we've got the six in the bottom, the bottom corner and purple is our color for that so this right the three now can't take those cells ah right so these threes do connect to each other because the next cell for this three will either be this one or this one therefore connecting it to its, its friend here so the, these are part of the same region what uh, red isn't it our color for the three regions so those connect in one way or the other I think all of these, yeah, the six is a massive restrictor because once you get a six in the grid, you can't put regions of size one, two or three next to it. So you have to be looking. This has to again be at least a four. So this is coming up here. OK, that's an unknown region. It could be very problematic with the two. 
the seven we know must come here. So the five, ah, ah, the five, which is an orange region, is now going to bump into this five. Look, it's got to take those three. Its next cell is going to take it next to this one. So we can then bound that one down. The, uh, the seven region is coming to here at least. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it could become part of this region or it could start to bend upwards. And oh, oh, of course. Oh, this is so obvious. <laughs> I'm so slow. Right. I'm going to come back to this cell now. I was looking at this cell and looking at the nine clue and wondering why I hadn't filled nine as an option in here. Well, the reason I haven't got nine as an option in here is it would be next to a three. So even if this little cell here took all the space it could, it would still come to that cell. And therefore this six has to get out there, look. And that's beautiful because it bounds the six and it means that this region which is at least of size five, has to come to at least here. So what's this cell is the next question. Well, that, okay, this is, this is part of the nine because it can't be uh, a one, two or a three because it's next to the six. It can't be a four because it's next to a four. So it's at least a five and there isn't space for it to be anything other than well, it's going to therefore definitely hit the nine. So the nines go in, they turn fluorescent. And the two I'll give its color to. The nine can't bump into the three down here. Oh, I see. Right. OK, so let's think about how this nine develops. And I think it's got to take this cell. If we try and make it not take this cell, which cells could it actually take? It could take that one, that one, and that one only without bumping into a three. So it definitely does take that one, which is penning in the five at the top. So the five at the top has got to come at least to here now, which means the nine has to come at least to here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine okay yeah that that would be just about okay oh no actually that would isolate this oh what's that ah oh bobbins oh no right it can get there ah right this this is the next place to look what is this well it can't be a one we know that it can't be a two it would hit this it can't be a three it can't be a four, it would hit this. It can't be a five, because it would hit this. And it can't be a nine, because the threes prevent that. So this is at least a seven. Can't be a six for obvious reasons. It's at least a seven, but it's not going to overlap with the nine. Now look, I think that means it's going to have to join up over here. I think it's got to be a seven, hasn't it? It can't be an eight, it can't be a nine, it can't be an eleven. There's not enough room for it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, it's not. Right, so that is a seven. And I think it's going to join up here with this. So it's got to take that one. And then we don't know quite what its last move is, but we can fill all those in with seven. I'm going to have to give seven its own colour in a moment. Uh, we know this is a seven. We know that co to connect, it doesn't come through this cell. So we can, we can wall this lot off. And probably now we can get a count on the top of the grid. What's going on now? We've got one, two, th oh, yes. Okay, look, the nine, the nine has only got six in it. And it can't take those three, those three white ones, because that will mean that the five here hasn't got enough. So the green can only take one of those two, which means it must take that one. And the moment it takes that one, the two gets forced. And we know where the, where the two goes. So it does this. Uh, I haven't worked out more than that yet, but let's just 
fill this in. That now must be green to connect the 9 up, which means that's 5 to connect the 5 up. 1, 2, 3. So we need one more 9 to make the 9 count correct, which means the 7 must go there. The 3 must go here. The 5 must go here. And we're almost done now. We've got um, just got to figure out what's going on at the bottom and draw our regions at the top and finish off our colouring as well. So that's forced. That's forced. I can totally and utterly see why this has been recommended. It's just a joy, isn't it? It is a joy. And it's not that difficult. I suspect you could make a monstrous one of these. Uh, there's no hurry for that. <laughs> Don't get any ideas. I, I, I do enjoy them, especially when they're the first ones of, of this type, this new rule set that we've done. Knowing that it's so accessible, a yellow is obviously the colour that needs to be. I've not used yellow yet. So sevens are yellow. So this might end up being yellow. We can fill in all of the sixes here. Oh, a C. Right. OK, so now all I'm left, all I'm left with is this tunnel thing. So we know that's got to be at least five. This has got to be at least seven. Oh, ah, that's got to be at least seven. It's only got six at the moment, so it goes there. And we know that this definitely joins there. So that's become, uh, I don't know how to show this. Um, this thing here, they are all connected together, which means this is not a seven. It's more than seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Can it be nine? Yes. I think, no, it can't. It would be touching the three. No, it can't be nine. Okay, so this needs to be at least 11. So it's got to take more cells. So if it took this, four and nine is 30, 13 is prime. So that would work. So this probably joins up here and that would leave behind eight cells at the top which we'd have to divide we'd have to divide up because we can't make this an eight region because it would be next to a two region yeah we know this needs to be an odd size region don't we um so oh, uh, no i can't make that work i don't think i can make that work um because if this joins here and doesn't take this cell. We know it's not it's not the right size at the moment, so it needs to grow. So if it grows left but doesn't go here, we get left with a size eight region. This could be a size five, but that would leave behind a size three region. I can't divide a size three region into a two region and a one region because one regions are impossible. So I can't have this as a five and leave a three here. This would have to grow to seven and that would leave a one there. So what I, th what I think we're learning is that that goes up there. We don't know how far it goes up there, but it needs to leave. Well, it could maybe actually even come all the way up there. But it needs to take at least this cell. Now, if it takes this size, now if size 10, isn't it? So it's, it's not the right size at the moment because it's touching a five region and a two region. And if it took the four, the four, it would then be a 14 region, which is touching a two region, which doesn't work again. Ah, so I think it has to extend again. So now, but now it's of size 11, which will probably work. One, I'm just going to check my maths there. Yes, it is. It's of size 11 prime. So that is fine. That That's not going to affect the world. Although it's now... Oh, no, that doesn't work either. Because <laughs> now my U-Pen Domino here is a bit problematic. So, I mean, it's the bottom of the grid is now fixed if we do this. We've got an 11 region and a 4 region, which can mutually coexist happily together. But we're left with this 6 region here which we can't divide up. Five and one won't work. Six doesn't work. So I think we've got to go again. 
So now this has become a 12 region, which it can't be. If I add four to it, I get 16, which is still wrong because it's touching a two. So, right, so all of this gets connected up. This is going to be one massive region. Uh, let's count the total size of it. So we've got five, six, seven, eight. Oh, now, okay, we've got 17 now. And if we add the, f ah, okay, no, it's not. It's not a total region, it's that. That is the finished grid. And the reason for that is that so far I've managed to prove that this long wiggly line is, is forced. These, all these cells had to connect to one another. And then the question is, which is a 17 region, 17 is prime. So that's, that can exist absolutely happily. If we were to add this cell in, we would force a 21 region, which can't work because we'd be next to a three and three divides into 21. So that is not the solution. The solution is this. Uh, the four region, which this is there for, must become blue, which is our color. Oh, whoopsie. Our color for four. And okay, and we're left with this region, which I, and I'm not going to be able to do this because this is a 17 region and I can't write. I could do little one sevens like this. How else could we do that? We could do it using, no, we can't use hexadecimal. That's not enough. Oh, I can't even use hex if I, because two digits is going to be 11, isn't it? That's going to be one, one. Um, I could, what else could I do? I could put letters in, I could put, I know there isn't a hexadecimal single letter. What, what's it going to be? If we go for a letter, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, H. I'm going to make them all H's. <laughs> I'm going to make them all H's, which I realize is a complete adulteration of hexadecimal. Um, but it at least sort of tries to explain what's going on in the grid. I think that's the correct solution. I've got no idea what. No, the software doesn't understand. The software is trying to apply Sudoku constraints to the grid and finding that there is a problem. Um, but we didn't find a problem. We just found something absolutely glorious. So Fistimafel, firstly, thank you for the recommendation. Then, of course, Sudoku Explorer, thank you for creating a beautiful puzzle that was so much fun to solve with a brand new rule set. What more could we want on a Monday? I don't think, frankly, anything. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. Mark and I, I think we are going to try and record... Um, a video of ancient wall for our patrons who have requested that um, even though it won't be a live solve obviously because we've tested that puzzle already um, but that was Fistimafel's masterpiece from the Sudoku hunt so we will be doing that for you we may do that now or I may get back to recording what I hope in the end will be a Starcraft video let's see anyway see you soon on the channel bye for now